cold air in across the northern half of the UK from the west-northwest. The snow line then starts to sink lower and as a result we're even going to see some sleet and snow showers to low levels across the north of Scotland but certainly snow accumulating over the West Highlands above 200 metres throughout Wednesday itself. Cloud and rain sink south across England and Wales with sunny spells following and the rain tends to peter out by the afternoon as well. 12 Celsius in the south feeling cold in the wind further north. GB News is the UK's home of discussion and debate from all perspectives. To stay up to date on the latest stories, make sure that you subscribe to the GB News channel right here on YouTube. You can watch us live 24-7 across the whole world. You can also check out exclusive content and catch up on previous episodes of your favourite shows. Every day, we ask the questions that you ask. So why not add your voice to the conversation in the comments section? Don't forget to subscribe. We are GB News, Britain's news channel. Every night at 11 on GB News, we bring you the next day's stories the day before. It's basically like time travel. If it's a big story, we'll cover it, guaranteed. But we'll also have some fun along the way. Big opinions, big laughs. Sometimes, big hair. This is Headliners, Headliners the paper review show that won't send you to sleep like the others will. 11 p.m., seven nights a week. Join us. Hello there, I'm Eamon Holmes. And I'm Isabel Webster. And we hope you can join us for... Breakfast with Eamon. And Isabel. You make me laugh out loud, belly laugh. Is that important first thing in the morning? Yeah, absolutely. And there's me trying to be deadly serious. <laughs> News is a serious business. Yeah, I have to rein you in sometimes. Well, it doesn't stop us laughing at it. It doesn't stop us having an opinion on what's going on. Yeah. And it certainly will not stop us reflecting what you think. Weekdays from six to half past nine on GB News. I'm Dan Wooten. Join me Monday to Thursday from 9 to 11 for the feistiest and most fun news debate on TV where free speech reigns. I'll bring you a sharp take on the day's biggest stories, bombshell newsmaker interviews and A-list guests. And I guarantee you no spin, no bias, no censorship and no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Wooten tonight, Monday to Thursdays from 9 on GB News. Hello and welcome to Headliners, the show that saves you the chore of having to read the papers by getting comedians to read them for you. My name's Dominic Frisby and before we meet tonight's turns, I hand you over to the impeccably well-articulated Polly Middlehurst, who is going to read you the news. OK, I'm Polly Middlehurst in the GB newsroom. Let's see if I can get through it. The Conservative MP David Davis says the Prime Minister should withdraw his Jimmy Savile smear against the Labour leader after the leader was mobbed outside Parliament today. Officers had to escort Sir Keir Starmer through a crowd of Covid lockdown protesters and had to bundle him into a car after some shouted um, accusing him of protecting paedophiles. Two people have been arrested for assaulting emergency workers during the clashes. Boris Johnson tweeted the behaviour towards Sakir was absolutely disgraceful. But Mr Davis told GB News the PM should apologise. Those demonstrations show the risk of making a, a frankly tasteless comment like that. Uh, Sakir Starmer's not guilty of anything in this respect. The Prime Minister should apologise for it and frankly he should retract it. David Davis. Well, the Prime Minister says the government is setting tough targets to reduce the number of patients currently on NHS waiting lists in England. It follows reports the Treasury had refused to sign off the so-called Covid recovery plan without firmer targets. The Prime Minister insists Number 10 and the Treasury are working together to tackle the patient backlog. What we're doing is working together across the whole of government uh, to fix the, the COVID backlogs, which, believe me, is a, is a massive priority for us, uh, for everybody in the country. Boris Johnson. In international news, Russia's President Vladimir Putin is warning European countries will be drawn into military conflict if Ukraine joins NATO. Following a meeting with the French President Emmanuel Macron, 
Putin says Moscow will do everything to find compromises on security in Europe that would suit all concerned. But, he says, there will be no winners if the crisis develops into a conflict. Meanwhile, the US President Joe Biden is warning if Vladimir Putin does invade Ukraine, Nord Stream 2, a crucial gas pipeline connecting Russia and Germany, will be blocked. Speaking at a joint news conference with the German Chancellor, Mr Biden said there'll be severe consequences if Russia makes a move. I think he has to realise that it would be a gigantic mistake for him to move on Ukraine. The impact on Europe and the rest of the world would be devastating and he would pay a heavy price. Joe Biden. Three patients paralysed after spinal cord injuries have finally been able to walk, cycle and swim using a nerve stimulation device. They were able to take their first steps after neurosurgeons attached an electrical implant to their spines, which is controlled using a touchscreen tablet. Swiss researchers hope to start a new trial of around 100 patients next year. On TV, online and on your radio via DAB+, you're with GB News. Now back to Headliners. Thank you, Polly, and welcome to Headliners, the show in which comedians review the papers. And I know some of you will be watching me and thinking, wow, Tony Blair's on GB News presenting Headliners. Uh, this channel is on the up. And so to tonight's guests, we have the tall and leggy Diane Spencer. And we have the even taller and leggier Leo Kurtz. <laughs> Hello, uh, people. How are you doing? Have you either of you ever seen me without a, a, a beard before? No. no. I, I don't like it. I don't like your actual face. You need to grow some hair over the top of it. Do you not? Do you think I look like your former prime minister? You no, no. I don't. You're not going to get many bookings for that. I'm afraid. I used to get. But, I used to get. It used to be my opening joke. Really? Oh, well, you, what, what, what the hell's Tony Blair doing in a comedy club? He, he's been ravaged by guilt. I know, I you know. sleep easily at night. Uh, yeah, I do. I sleep very well, and you know that because often we are together. Right, let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's take a look at tomorrow's front pages, and we start with the Daily Mail. Uh, no, we don't. We start with the Telegraph, I beg your pardon, and the Telegraph has North Sea oil fired up amid net zero row. That's a court story we'll be covering in a moment. And there's also US and Germany threaten Nord Stream 2 as Britain commits extra troops to Poland. The Independent goes with abusive protesters, target Starmer with Savile slur. Um, that's another story we'll be covering. The Guardian next, that goes with the same story. Angry MPs blame Johnson's poison after anti-vaxxers set upon Starmer. A lot of half-truths there, as you'll discover in just a moment. And it's hard to see this and... I don't know if this makes you think a war could happen or couldn't happen, but there's a picture of a man with a wooden gun. <laughs> but the actual title is, it's hard to see this and not think a war could happen. Um, it doesn't exactly inspire confidence, I suppose. The FT has table talk. Macron seeks to avoid war. And there's a picture of a very big table and two small men. There's also ECB rate expectations force up Greek and Italian borrowing costs. That is a story we won't be covering against my best advice. The Sun leads on Prem Star's vile attack on cat. We won't be covering that story either. There is no cat dragging on this show. And The Times leads with Britain will not flinch over Ukraine, says PM. I bet you it will. And Johnson accused by own MPs of inciting mob against Starmer. On to The Express, which has Boris. Rishi is loyal and we're united on problems. The Express, loyal as ever. And finally, we have The Daily Star, which goes with the all-important story, sleep more, weigh less. Finally, a weight loss programme we support. An extra hour in bed saves 270 calories. Maybe, but imagine how many calories you would have burnt if you'd got up. And those are today's headlines.
And so drama for Starmer this afternoon as he and David Lammy were bundled into a police car um, to escape an angry crowd of protesters. Leo, this story is being spun as somehow being Johnson's fault because Johnson smeared Starmer with Jimmy Savile. But I watched the incident on the internet and everyone was shouting, what about the working class? Is this a Labour Party or a party of the elite? And if anyone was repeatedly mentioned, it was Julian Assange, not uh, um, Jimmy Savile. So I think there's a bit of smearing going on here. Would yeah, you agree? They certainly, they certainly cherry picked some of the things that they, they want the mob to be to be saying. And you know, in fact they, they were calling for uh, for Labour to recognise its working class roots and also uh, recognise that Assange is is you know possibly a, a victim of a miscarriage of justice. Uh, but yeah Lamy and Starmer had to be bundled um, I don't know how you bundle them. They're both quite quite large chaps. I don't know how you bundle them, but they had to be bundled uh, to safety. Hurried. I think they were hurried into a car by the police. But that's the police taking precautions, I yeah. suppose. I always think that bundled is folded in the middle. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's one of those sort of generic terms that journalists turn to. It's like fury. When they're not sure what word to use, they say fury or, or, or flaunting. Furious. People are all, The only place I ever see people flaunting is always curves. And it's always in the newspaper. <laughs> so I've never flaunted uh, anything. But, um, but yes, yeah, so they're, they're I've blaming... I've flaunted my wealth. They're blaming this mob, um, or I almost said blaunted there, which doesn't make any sense, but they're, they're blaming this mob on uh, Boris's comments last week, uh, or recent comments about um, Jimmy Savile. So he said, you know, Keir Starmer, when he was head of the CPS, didn't prosecute Savile, which seems a bit of a... Uh, apparently it was investigated and it's not... I mean, there's a slight element of truth in it, but it's not really Starmer's fault. It seems like there was an open call there to mention grooming gangs, which are still a problem and still being minimised by the Labour establishment. So that would be something to, to, uh, to raise uh, and, a, and attack a real weakness for Starmer. Uh, so he didn't do it. And it seems to be like trying to get Al Capone on his uh, taxes rather than his, you know, crimes. Your turn. Well, I felt it had a little, just a little subtle whiff of maybe Putin and Navalny about it. You know, because if you misread what happened, which is very easy to do in what they've sort of printed, you could interpret it as Boris has sent some kind of mob after Keir Starmer. And if you imagine that that happened to any political opponent of somebody like Putin or Lukashenko, and suddenly they've been locked up by the police. Can you see where I'm going with this conspiracy? Yeah, I can, totally. <laughs> but... you're, not, you're not with it, are you? No, I was slightly, I, I was slightly lost, but, but, but I, go on. I'm not, I wouldn't say... No, I'm not totally with it, since you've, 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 you've reversed it and put the cameras on me. I just think it's... it's I don't think it's the hand of Putin. <laughs> but I think it's... It, I just think, no, I think... angry white working class people abandoned by the Labour Party angry about it, ultimately. Go on, tell me... Well, I was going to say, I think that um, you could spin this in foreign press as Boris sends mob after political opponent. Mm. I think you could spin it, is what I'm saying. Well, that's how, they, sp you. That's how they spanned the, uh, the Capitol riots on January the 6th last year. You know, they said Trump sent them down there. And there wasn't really much. There was pretty flimsy evidence of Trump inciting it's, them. Yeah, the key word... I thought you that term cherry-picking mm. was absolutely spot in. Now, in the new look headliners, we are whizzing from story to story. We're no longer beating about the bush. And we're going to go straight to our um, next story, which is The Guardian and French leader Emmanuel Macron has met with Russian leader Vladimir Putin, two small men and a big table, Leo. Yeah, so uh, I have uh, the same story, but a different angle uh, in front of me on this bit of paper. So I'm going with what I've got here, because okay, that's what you, I'm prepared. You go with that, <laughs> but let's have a look at the table, you know, that big table that looks like... Um... That's from Mr Burns House, isn't it? <laughs> maybe they have to get, like, the, an aide to pass the pepper. Or maybe they get a pepper each. It looks sashes. Like... This is why we need to keep sashes. They were going to try and get do away with sashes, but imagine that they'd both need their own tomato ketchup. It looks like my stepfather used to run a showy Italian furniture shop in the 1980s, and it looks like the sort of thing that he used to sell to a Middle Eastern clientele. That is must what that have table been a, looks like. That must have been a big shop if you could have tables like that. In. Well, it was smaller versions of similarly naff but expensive tables. It's like half an IKEA right uh, there. Uh, <laughs> I'm just thinking about the poor doddery old sort of butler that's got a shuffle from one end of the table to the next and sort of find out what everybody wants. It's a hotshot <laughs> Russian athlete doing it. Yeah, just doing backflips along yeah. the table.
Right, tell us the story. It's much more important than our idol. So the story, Chan. well, this is, so this is about this <laughs> the Ukraine crisis with Russia. Uh, so Defence Secretary Ben Wallace says the UK will send 350 further troops to Poland in the spirit of solidarity, not in the spirit of doing much, because it's 350 against 100,000 uh, <laughs> Russian troops. Although I've got to say, I've got to say, so Russia's uh, amassed uh, 100,000 troops in the border with Ukraine. They've been there for ages. I've been doing headliners week after week. They're still there. What, what are they doing? Is Putin chicken? Is he too chicken to invade? Oh my God, Putin, you've got 100,000 troops, they're all getting frostbite. You want to well, invade? The person who's going to be able to answer that uh, question is our resident Putin expert. <laughs> <laughs> no fewer than three biographies of the great uh, man, Diane. Tell us, what is he thinking? What is he doing? Well, what is his actually, motivation? We're a little bit worried right now because what he's actually done is that he's now built field hospitals, which are very worrying. And we're actually keeping an eye on when they finish bringing all the things in. Because when they stop bringing in all the supplies, that means they've got everything that they need right. and that's when you get worried now I agree with the 350 I think what we need to do is basically we need to in Poland just set up a pyramid stage near the border Adele's not doing anything she's quit Vegas get her on suddenly we'll have like 200,000 people flock to like English people suddenly flock to Poland put on a West Ham match They've got 700,000 fans. Now we're talking. Do you see what harder, I mean? They're harder than Adele fans as well. I think the biggest mistake our country ever you made was, was banning football hooliganism. Uh, in Russia, they take the right approach. They train them. The state trains the football hooligans. So then they can go, go to Marseille. Yeah, and remember they English targeted fans. all the British and they were, they were like in really good shape. Yeah, and... all doing judo and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, we're going to move on. And by the way, the, there was one question... Like, I watched Fiddler on the Roof the other day, which was set in the 19th century, and Ukraine was part of Russia then. Is there an attitude... You probably know this, having read Putin biographies. Is there an attitude in Ukraine that... They, there are a lot of people who would rather be part of Russia. In the eastern region, the Donbass region, a lot of people actually speak Russian, and there is sort of a, a leaning towards it, which is... Uh, but no, in like sort of, unfortunately, if you look at Ukraine, there's a river that goes all the way sort of down the middle. And I have a funny feeling that Putin is going to try and cut Ukraine in half using this river as a marker. Uh, that's my wacky theory that has no basis in reality. This is just me reading things. Yeah, no, but geography often gives you a natural yeah. order. Right, The Guardian's next. And um, Leo, you're summarising this one. You, you, you're, you, you seem to get all of them, but I think... A common error is to conflate anti-Semitic sentiment with anti-Israel sentiment. And while there's a lot of crossover between the two, they're not always the same. And this story seems to be an example of that. Well, this is always the excuse for people who say things, who criticise Israel, they are, or, you know, are anti-Semitic towards, uh, you know, the, the Jewish state. They say, oh, I'm not being anti-Semitic, I'm just anti-Israel. And it's like, well, why have you picked Israel in particular out of all the countries in the Middle East that commit far worse human rights atrocities and, and, you know, don't have women's rights or gay rights enshrined into law and equality. Why is it that you sing... What's different about Israel that makes you single it out to, for criticism? And but yeah, in this case, it was a Jewish woman, though. Well, in this case, it's a, it's a Jewish... But Jewish women can be anti-Semitic, too. So Labour has dropped an investigation into an 82-year-old Jewish woman for an alleged anti-Semitism. Uh, imagine being too anti-Semitic for the Labour Party. I mean, that's, that's pretty bad. That is pretty bad. So she, she threatened to sue the party for unlawfully discriminating against her uh, based on her belief in anti-Zionism, which, uh, you know, seems to be... I mean, anti-Zionism is, you know, slightly... Like you say, anti-Israel and anti-Semitism, the two so are so often there are quite a lot, I mean, even there's a lot of Hasidics that don't believe in the Jewish state. It's yeah. quite a common thing. Yeah. Is, would she not be one of those? She wouldn't she? be one of those. She used to be a Zionist, then she went to Israel and decided she wasn't a Zionist. So I don't know what she saw there. Uh, and that but... is a hell of a bad trip advisor <laughs> review, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> yeah. the point is Labour... I went to this country and <laughs> now I think it shouldn't exist. State of Israel, <laughs> two stars. No, no. <laughs> I felt the same about Tunisia, but anyway... The, uh, <laughs> I went there, I hated it. Um, anyway, the, uh, but that, it might just have been the resort, not the entire country. I just, shouldn't judge a country. Yeah, you should leave the resort. The resort. Yeah, just yeah. because the hot dogs were cold, <laughs> you shouldn't condemn a whole nation. <laughs> anyway, it was a slight exaggeration for the purposes of comedy. Anyway, we move on. Do you have any views on this? She won, she won her case and she's pleased about it. Yeah, she's... Well, she, not she won it, but Labour have dropped it. So she's Labour, Labour have dropped it. I'm sure she is. She is happy. Um, it doesn't specifically say she's happy, but... <laughs> yeah. 
Um, any views, any thoughts, or should we crack straight on? Oh, let's crack on. Let's crack on. We are a slick machine, and we go to Tuesday's uh, Guardian Excellence story that one million adults in the UK go an entire day without food because of the cost of living crisis. I've just gone an entire day without food, but that's because I'm doing the 5-2 diet. Um, what do you make of this? I think the, what are they called, the Food Foundation are exaggerating, but what are your views, Diane? Well, that's interesting you think they're exaggerating. Well, I think that if this is not exaggerated, it's a deeply sad and worrying story that in our country, so a million adults, and possibly they're saying two million children are at risk of not having nutritious food and are at risk of not eating enough. And of course, we all know if you don't eat healthily, then you can't really do anything healthily. And that will obviously affect the development of kids. And 100%. we sort of, I, it, it's very alarming that this is because of the cost There's of living crisis. between eating healthily and not being enough food. Yes, and uh, it, it often happens that sort of the uh, very low value um, nutritional foods, like with low nutritional value, can also be cheaply made. Yeah. So you end up, you can afford to buy some food, but it's possibly not the best for you. But this is literally about people not having enough to eat. We need to get some kind of underground movement happening with the people who have the supermarket sticker guns with the yellow reduced label on. Yeah. And they need to just get out there and well, just... Well, that's food but waste laws. The supermarkets waste so much. So waste. much is wasted. Only, it's only because they're obeying, obeying the law. It's but so the much law. is wasted. Yeah. And um, if, if this is... I think you should just give it out free. And if the people want it free and it's their risk, if you know, if it's yeah. past its sell by date, yeah, the it. nose never lies, you can just sniff it. But yeah, there's yeah, been exactly. a huge increase in the price of food as well. So, uh, Jack Monroe uh, says that a bag of pasta in her supermarket has gone from 29p to 70p. So, you know, after you've bought your fags and your scratch cars and paid for Sky Sports, there's not much left over for you. Can I, can I just pick up Jack Monroe and The Guardian on this? She says a 500 gram bag of pasta in her local supermarket has gone from 29p to 70p, an increase of 14%. I'm sorry, that's, that's not, not an increase 14%. of 14%. It is. It's 133%. That's not 14%. And then it goes, rice has gone from 45p a kilo to one pound. That is 344%. No, no it's not. not. It's 120%. <laughs> They've just got their figures hopelessly wrong. Wow. I mean, it's yeah. just so innumerate. And you think, this is the Guardian. How can they well, be that Well, of course, it's the Guardian. When have they ever been right about anything? Yeah, but if they I get mean, that they wrong... they comedy reviews. <laughs> oh. That, on that note, we are going to take an interval. We've reached the end of part one. We're going to take a break now. Watch the ads, buy their products, help pay my salary, and then join us for part two, in which we'll find out uh, about more hypocrisy allegations levelled against Nicola Sturgeon and about the latest developments in cyber flashing. GB News is the UK's home of discussion and debate. From all perspectives. To stay up to date on the latest stories. Make sure that you subscribe to the GB News channel. Right here on YouTube. You can watch us live 24-7 across the whole world. You can also check out exclusive content and catch up on previous episodes of your favourite shows. Every day, we ask the questions that you ask. So why not add your voice to the conversation in the comments section? Don't forget to subscribe. We are GB News, Britain's news channel. Every night at 11 on GB News, we bring you the next day's stories the day before. It's basically like time travel. If it's a big story, we'll cover it, guaranteed. But we'll also have some fun along the way. Big opinions, big laughs. Sometimes, big hair. This is Headliners, Headliners the paper review show that won't send you to sleep like the others will. 11 p.m., seven nights a week. Join us. Hello there, I'm Eamon Holmes. And I'm Isabel Webster. And we hope you can join us for... Breakfast with Eamon. And Isabel. You make me laugh out loud, belly laugh. Is that important first thing in the morning? Yeah, absolutely. And there's me trying to be deadly serious. <laughs> News is a serious business. Yeah, I have to rein you in sometimes. Well, it doesn't stop us laughing at it. It doesn't stop us having an opinion on what's going on. Yeah. And it certainly will not stop us reflecting what you think. Weekdays from six to half past nine on GB News. 
I'm Dan Wooten. Join me Monday to Thursday from 9 to 11 for the feistiest and most fun news debate on TV where free speech reigns. I'll bring you a sharp take on the day's biggest stories, bombshell newsmaker interviews and A-list guests. And I guarantee you no spin, no bias, no censorship and no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Wooten tonight, Monday to Thursdays from 9 on GB News. Welcome back to Headliners. My name's Dominic Frisby. I am the UK's leading Tony Blair impersonator. And joining me tonight in the role of Harriet Harman, we have Diane Spencer. Don't you dare. And Gordon Brown. <laughs> we have Leo Kurse. And uh, who's got the first story? Nicola Sturgeon. That must be you, Leo. She's being hypocritical, apparently. Yeah, thank you um, for uh, racially stereotyping me on this story. So, there's uh, no racial stereotype. We just feel, as a Scot, it's appropriate to call you <laughs> Scot, especially given your forthright views on the former Scot. Right? Well, yeah, so the Oil and Gas Authority has given the green light to a new oil and gas project in the North Sea just months after Nicola Sturgeon hosted the COP26 climate change summit and basically said, you know, they weren't going to develop anything, you know, the, the, the Campbell field wasn't going to get the green light. So uh, the government has, has now claimed that the Abigail oil field, quite a nice name for an oil field, uh, is going to be, which is going to be developed by an Israeli company called Ithaca Energy, will, uh, will not have a significant effect on the environment. There's so many things triggering to the left in that paragraph. You've got oil, <laughs> gas, Israel and jobs. You know, this is going to create, this is going to create wealth. And, uh, and employment, it's, uh, it's got to be stopped, it's, uh, it's going to ruin Scotland. Um, so yeah, basically as soon as Greta Thunberg packed her bags and went home in her private jet, um, uh, Nicola Sturgeon thought, well yeah, actually we do need some oil and gas. And finally, it's something sensible from Scotland's government. We need to develop, we can't just rely on wind power. Remember a few months ago when the wind stopped blowing and then we didn't have any power and we had to then gas and oil spiked up. Putin's got us over a barrel, a barrel of oil. And uh, you know, now, now energy prices, energy prices, bills are going to go up by, I think it's 50% or 312% if you <laughs> listen to The Guardian uh, in April. The, the energy prices are going to go up by an average of £700. It's ridiculous. And, you know, some of the politicians in Scotland really just take such a ridiculous line on this. The Green Party who sort of prop up the SNP in the Scottish Parliament. Uh, Patrick Harvey uh, from the Scottish Greens says that anybody who wants to work in oil and gas in Scotland is far right. Isn't that ridiculous? Where That's do you what stand far right in the moral argument for fossil fuels? Are you pro or anti, or do you do, do you avoid it? Where are you on this? Um, I really admired uh, India's uh, stance at COP22, where they they actually said, "Look, we're going to reduce it, but we can't. We're committing to reducing it slowly, because um, I do happen to know the UK. We are at 11% deficit in terms of the amount of oil that we use and the amount of oil that we produce. We're at 11 percent deficit. So we have to buy that extra 11 percent in. Now, I don't know whether getting this magical oil field will uh, fill that deficit, because I'm not sure if it's that big. But oh, it won't. Yeah. But it, it'll be, a, you know, it's just one business. I mean, like Shell pulled out of that oil field, which was quite interesting, because Shell, being such a huge corporation, would have been more accountable for the green emissions targets. Yeah, they're be they're, Shell have been infected by anti-fossil fuel woke rubbish, and they're trying to rebrand themselves as a green co green, green energy company. Mm. Which is mad. Yeah. Fossil fuels have made so many wonderful things possible, and we owe so much to them, and we should be grateful to yeah. them. Yeah, and it's kind of disgusting to see Sorry the poorest, to the the poorest in society high. like being punished with green tariffs and green policy. So cheap energy means you know people can heat their homes and can afford to buy you know pastas cheaper because the truck that drives the pasta to the supermarket. Not, it, is even if expensive. you judge it on environmental grounds, it's still not cheaper yeah. because of all the fossil fuel that needs to be consumed to create the green energy in yeah, the first place. Yeah. Anyway, up next is uh, Tuesday's Mail, and uh, uh, praying is now an act of defiance. This is one of those mail pieces where you sort of only hear one side of the story, but it's a bit dodgy, isn't it? Well, you... I mean, this, OK, so this is the story of a, a traumatised schoolboy. OK, so that's where I'm going to start with this. Um, he wanted to pray because his religion says he should pray at certain times of the day and the prayer room was shut. Now, bear in mind, he's going to a school that is three quarters Muslim. He is a Muslim boy and he was like, right, the prayer room shut. 
we'll pray outside the prayer room. I like his thinking. It's a bit innovative. He takes his blazer off. He has this little prayer mat. I'm sure his mother would be like, no, your blazer. <laughs> uh, that's the thing that's expensive. Uh, but he still did it, you know, and, and he's like there doing his thing. But then a teacher comes along and this is where the story splits because the school has one story and the child has another, uh, as always. And apparently this teacher got very angry and uh, sort of yanked him up and said, this is an act of defiance. And so I, I, mean, I don't understand that phrase. Mm. What do they mean, well, unless, act of unless defiance? Unless the kid was praying, because I read somewhere, I don't, I don't know where I read it because I didn't see it when I reread it, but I read that he was supposed to go in after morning break and he'd started praying so he didn't have to go back. Oh, wait a minute. Now, you see, this is the problem, because he, he is a child and kids can be very cheeky. What was he praying for? Was he sat there going, <laughs> please let this teacher die? Like, because if he was doing that, yeah, or... Maybe the prayer gave him, yeah. Please let Smarties rain from heaven, miss. You can't stop me. Like, you, because we don't quite know the details of the story, but the end result is that the parents are mad, the school's saying, we're including everybody, and apparently there's some CCTV, which has mm. not been looked which at. the school isn't revealing. That's, the, that's where it gets really fishy. Yeah, it gets weird, doesn't it? Have you got it? any views on this, Leo, or can we move on? Yeah, no, I think, I think we can move on. I just, I mean, with the other kids, if it's three-quarter Muslim, what, do the other kids, they weren't praying. Do they not want to get into heaven? Yeah. Like, surely they should get in maybe trouble. They, maybe they pray before breakfast or something, I don't know. But anyway, Peng Shui, the Chinese tennis star who disappeared after she made rape allegations against a powerful politician, now says her words were twisted. This is not a nice story, is it? So, yeah, this is, I mean, this is quite an interesting uh, story and really shows, uh, you know, gives us a peek behind the Chinese Communist Party's curtain. It won't be an iron curtain. What It would be made out of, I don't know, Beautiful red silk. Beautiful red Gee. silk. Um, noodles, perhaps. I don't know. But in her November the 2nd post on Weibo, which is a social network in, in uh, China, uh, the tennis player uh, Peng Shui uh, revealed an on and off affair with uh, Zhang Gaoli, uh, 75, who was the country's seventh most powerful politician. Uh, so we're talking, you know, real John Redwood, Redwood quasi, levels of... quasi uh, quality. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, So, you know, a properly powerful politician. Um, so she was having an affair and she, uh, she accused him of forcing her into sex with his wife guarding the door, which is, uh, which is strange. The post soon disappeared uh, and censors moved to remove posts about Peng and her allegations made by, by other people. Uh, and she, she went away. She spent some time uh, away and uh, has now said she, she retracts it and says she wasn't assaulted by him um, and she came to this decision after spending some time in a torture chamber. Uh, no, I made that bit up. But I mean, she, you know, we've well, seen... can only presume. We've seen similar things happen. We've seen, uh, you know, stars in China retract, uh, retract statements. So, the, you know, the Chinese government has ways of making people not talk. When, you, um, when you're having um, sex, do you have... Uh... Do you have your husband, uh, your spouse, guard the door? I mean, that's... That that <laughs> well, Don't a, no, that's look at me question. while you ask never that. Me that. Why did you <laughs> never ask me that? I was trying to bring Diane into the question and I was well, trying to loop something in. I know it's... A, I must a admit, it is... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do feel for the wife there. It's like, yeah. you know, I could be doing I should, something else. Phrase that is, have you ever had to guard the door when your husband's... You know, it, yeah, oh, that's so much better. That's, that's such a, a, a better phrase. No. I mean, that's next level <laughs> cheating. Next level <laughs> cheating. If you get your wife to be your guard dog, that is just, you know, you've got to respect that level. Of, like, <laughs> <laughs> Men who send pictures of their private parts unsolicited now face prison. The male uses a word that we can't say on this program, um, but. Uh, I don't see the point of sending pictures of my private parts to other people. It's not something I've ever done. But, Diane, can you shed some light on this story for us? Well, uh, what's quite interesting is that uh, cyber flashes, as they are known, if you decide to use your social media and uh, take a photo of what happens to be in your trousers and you send it to somebody else and they haven't asked for it, then, um, yes, that will become a criminal offence, and rightly so it should. It is not currently a criminal offence in England or Wales, but it is in Scotland, because I think that uh, Leo's mum got fed up of him sending pictures saying, are you sure it's normal? Well, there's um, a lot of accidental ones due to the kilts <laughs> and the strong winds. So. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, they're going to change it. And, uh, but I mean, for me, it seems a little weird. The first time they sort of, okay. The first time they sort of investigated this was 2015, but the internet's been around since 1983. Mm. And I went to Pompeii once upon a time and uh, they've drawn, uh, shall we call them trouser snakes? <laughs> um, gentlemen's courgettes. They've drawn them all over that city. Uh, uh, what graffiti you mean, or original original mosaic work? No, from... that's original graffiti, okay. original. And, and the... it survived the lava. Yes, amazing. So that means that human beings have been doing this for about one thousand nine hundred and forty odd years. But it was very hard to send it when it was graffiti on a stone wall. No, you have to sort of hide it and then go, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, here's a story. This is in the mirror. Seven men have been arrested after reports of castration, castration procedures being broadcast live online in, of all places, Finsbury Park. <laughs> <laughs> this is a different kind of, uh, a different kind of genital picture. Uh, so police have arrested seven people after raiding a cult where men are castrated for paying viewers. So uh, the men were reportedly members of the, the Nullo subculture, which involves men willingly having their penis and testicles removed to make them like guardian readers. So uh, <laughs> seven, seven men have been arrested for this. It's, it's insane. I mean, this, this, shows, this shows how men are discriminated against. Like, if a woman wants to make money uh, you know, with, with her genitals online, uh, open an OnlyFans account, uh, you just need to show probably your bum hole. Is that, is that an acceptable word for it? I think it probably is. Uh, men, we have to like actually get the garden shears out and cut it off and be like, look at this. And there's only so many times you can do that. So yeah, men are really discriminated against here. But yeah, terrible, terrible story. And one of the neighbors said uh, the police came around and they were putting everything in plastic bags. Oh my oh. God, I hope I don't pick oh. that up to do my oh. shopping. That's... I just, who's doing it? Are they doing it properly? Well, they apparently, doing, um, well, apparently it's got quite, quite a, a wide range of appeal. Apparently uh, the suspects are in their 30s, 40s, 50s and 60s. So if you're into that kind of thing, there's somebody out there for you. But um, They had one for each decade almost. Uh, yeah. I mean, as with every cult or religion, um, I'm sure they sell paraphernalia associated with it. It's just not a gift shop I would want to visit. Yeah, <laughs> nor me. I mean, the mind boggles. Our next story at the star is every 18-year-old boy's dream. His hot PE teacher, Miss <laughs> Tweedy, age 23, danced the boozy night away and then took him back to a Premier Inn. How about that, Diane? No. No, 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 no. We've already had this disagreement because... I feel... Am I, am I on the wrong side of the argument? Oh, my God, you two are all, like, <laughs> high-fiving. They're like, yeah, I wish my PE teacher was like that. You'd be all, like, macho about it. Like, you two wouldn't cry I'm if quite, a grown woman... I'm quite woman... glad Mr Wilson didn't take me to travel lodge, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> like, my recollection of PE teachers, they're the person that you run away from to go smoke. So that is my first recollection. But this pupil is now 22. The... Former teacher in question is now 27, but this happened four years ago. She was 23, he was 18. And Why has it only come out now? Well, I believe that the General Teaching Council for Scotland are late with their homework. I think they're a little late at is bringing this out. The pandemic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe a dog ate it. And what happened was uh, she got drunk with them and they were dancing in this nightclub. Like, usually, see, I used to be a teacher. And you always have other teachers around you when you're looking after the kids. Mm. And no matter how old they are... To prevent this sort of thing happening, I guess. No! Oh, right. No, because you're just, like, looking after the kids. You're supposed to be there to be their chaperones, not to take them back to the hotel. Oh, uh, but she now lives in Dubai and she is a yoga teacher. So I don't know if this ruling will actually affect her. It's kind of odd that it's mm. in the paper. I remember I mean, my kids, oh, go on, you go. Well, just in defense, I mean, so he's 18, he was 18 years old and she was 23 at the time. So it's not mm. a huge age gap. Uh, he's from Paisley. So 18 in Paisley years is about 37, you know? So, uh, and he'd, uh, that night he'd consumed around three or four pints, a bottle of wine, some spirits, 
rum and shots. I mean, <laughs> was he Oliver Reed? I mean, well, yeah. I'm, I'm amazed. I'm amazed he could have sex with anything after that. My uh, my son's uh, prom night. You know, his last kind of big party at school. The chemistry teacher and ran off with the art teacher. Now mm. that's that, acceptable. Yeah. That's but, acceptable. Yeah. Anyway, that's all by the by. Right, part two is coming to an end. The weather is next and then some ads. Join us for part three. When we find out about the university student who collected Nazi memorabilia. But first, here's the weather. Hello again. Cloudy skies overnight will bring outbreaks of rain to Scotland, Northern Ireland and Northern England and act as a blanket for much of the country, particularly in the south, where it will be a mild night. A few cloud breaks are possible for central and southern parts of the UK, but even here, enough of a breeze to keep things stirred up and mild. Heavy rain pushes south across Scotland, arriving into southern Scotland, Northern Ireland and Northern England by dawn. 7 to 10 Celsius for much of England, Wales, central and southern Scotland, Northern Ireland. But for the north of Scotland, 2 to 5 Celsius. Colder here because the front has moved south and colder, brighter weather follows for central belt northwards. And really through Tuesday, we're going to see further blustery showers for much of northern and western Scotland, those showers falling as snow above three or four hundred metres. But for Northern Ireland, southern Scotland, northern England, it stays cloudy with some light outbreaks of rain on and off throughout the day. Further south again, dry with even some sunshine for the Midlands, East Anglia, southern counties of England, South Wales, 12 to 14 Celsius in places here. Staying breezy and cloudy across much of England and Wales overnight, then into the start of Wednesday. And as a result, it's going to be mild. Outbreaks of rain pushing through Wales into the Midlands. And to the north, well, clearer spells for Northern England, for Scotland and Northern Ireland, but further blustery showers. And as we go through Wednesday, we're going to drag cold air in across the northern half of the UK from the west-northwest. The snow line then starts to sink lower. And as a result, we're even going to see some sleet and snow showers to low levels across the north of Scotland, but certainly snow accumulating over the West Highlands above 200 metres throughout Wednesday itself. Cloud and rain sink south across England and Wales with sunny spells following and the rain tends to peter out by the afternoon as well. 12 Celsius in the south, feeling cold in the wind further north. GB News is the UK's home of discussion and debate from all perspectives. To stay up to date on the latest stories, make sure that you subscribe to the GB News channel right here on YouTube. You can watch us live 24-7 across the whole world. You can also check out exclusive content and catch up on previous episodes of your favourite shows. Every day, we ask the questions that you ask. So why not add your voice to the conversation in the comments section? Don't forget to subscribe. We are GB News, Britain's news channel. Every night at 11 on GB News, we bring you the next day's stories the day before. It's basically like time travel. If it's a big story, we'll cover it, guaranteed. But we'll also have some fun along the way. Big opinions, big laughs. Sometimes, big hair. This is Headliners, Headliners the paper review show that won't send you to sleep like the others will. 11 p.m., seven nights a week. Join us. Hello there, I'm Eamon Holmes. And I'm Isabel Webster. And we hope you can join us for... Breakfast with Eamon. And Isabel. You make me laugh out loud, belly laugh. Is that important first thing in the morning? Yeah, absolutely. And there's me trying to be deadly serious. <laughs> News is a serious business. Yeah, I have to rein you in sometimes. Well, it doesn't stop us laughing at it. It doesn't stop us having an opinion on what's going on. Yeah. And it certainly will not stop us reflecting what you think. Weekdays from six to half past nine on GB News. I'm Dan Wooten. Join me Monday to Thursday from 9 to 11 for the feistiest and most fun news debate on TV where free speech reigns. I'll bring you a sharp take on the day's biggest stories, bombshell newsmaker interviews and A-list guests. And I guarantee you no spin, no bias, no censorship and no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Wooten tonight, Monday to Thursdays from 9 on GB News. Welcome back to part three of Headliners. My name is Tony Blair. I'm your host. <laughs> and, uh, 
With me are the elegant and refined Diane Spencer and the elephant and inclined Leo Kirst. You must be sick of people <laughs> referring to your height. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, OK. Just well, refer to me on. as a leggy brunette, please. OK, we have um, the leggy brunette Leo Kirst and the leggy brunette Diane Spencer. Not really what? brunette. <laughs> what? would you call yourself? Strawberry bronze? What, 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 how would I...? This is Auburn. a front Auburn. to my people. The leggy All Auburn. the ginger people are going to find you on Twitter now. That is it. Oh, I, I, I had you down as... I didn't... Well, anyway, never mind. Right, um, let's crack on with the next story before we... Uh, um, uh, <laughs> I've lost my place in the auto queue. I'm afraid to say. We start... Well, I think we've got... <laughs> my bit's been pasted in twice, but we're going to start with Leo and the Sun and Christian Ronaldo, uh, who is the first person to reach 400 million followers on Instagram, which is about seven times the UK population. Yeah. So, I mean, possibly, according to the Sun, the Sun say uh, a quarter of his uh, followers are fake. So there could be people in the UK that have multiple Instagram accounts. Uh, and 18.7% of his followers are suspicious accounts, with a further 6.4% tarnished as mass follower accounts. So there's, you know, the sun is certainly saying, whoa, about half of these people aren't real. So we're talking not 400 million, 200 million, which is what, the population of... Um, What's well, got 200 million people? Nigeria, maybe? Ni I was going to say Nigeria, but then I wasn't sure if I was totally wrong. I think it but I might think it do. is. It's a very populous country. <laughs> very uh, large. Popular. Po Populated. Populous. Populous. Oh, I populous thought you said is populist. No, populous. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Yeah, fine, fine, fine. I don't think a country can be populist. Nor do I. That's why I picked um, it up on it. But, it but uh, yeah, theory. so, I mean, people... That we've, we've seen various milestones reach. You know, we've seen uh, the first man on the moon, uh, the first dog in space. I don't know, there's that... Um, the octopus that could predict the World Cup. Now, Cristiano Ronaldo has, uh, has reached 400 million Instagram. So Piers Morgan has congratulated him uh, because he only fo follows 500 people and Piers Morgan's one of them. Isn't that... That's strange. Um, um, he, he so he's bought in. He's got bots following him, basically. He's bought some of yeah. followers in. But he's he, famously he, quite vain, isn't he, Ronaldo? Yeah, he is quite vain. Yeah, he, he's had... Uh, you know, he looks after himself. He's very manicured. Um, he obviously works out and stuff. Um, and apparently he can earn £780,000 for each post. So if he posts, you know, saying, oh, I love this energy drink or whatever, he can earn £780,000. not Coke. Do you remember when he was... Seen picture in the coke and he hid the coke. I quite liked him for doing. I like I liked him for that as well. Yeah. What are your? Have you? What? How many followers you got, you got on Instagram? Oh. I'm on fifty one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a fake Dominic Frisbee account on Instagram that's got more followers than me. <laughs> I am quite. Uh, I, I mean, wow, four hundred million. That's a lot of banana bread he must be making. That's the kind of thing that I look up. For me, Instagram is the cat channel. I absolutely love watching just little reels of cats, pictures of raccoons. It's like a little nature channel that I've curated. Happy Barra are big on Instagram as well. You know, the giant Brazilian rodent. And they're amazing. They're so funny. I saw one eating some broccoli this morning. They yeah, that, yeah, incredible. Yeah. yeah. Are they big on Instagram? I've Dude. seen them in the flesh going on a canoe in the Amazon once upon a time. Really? Yeah, they're fantastic animals. Yeah, yeah, they look amazing. I saw one in real life in uh, Cotswold Wildlife Park. Um, but I really want to see them in the wild. Um, oh, yeah, they're, they're kind of cool. You see lots of animals in the Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> the mail is next, uh, Diane, and a student has been jailed after disguise... I can't work out if this story's funny or dark, but he's been disguising... He disguised a bomb-making manual as a Minecraft guy, <laughs> shared it online, and now he's got to go to jail for... 42 months. Yeah. Now, Connor Burke, who is 19, shared uh, the anarchist cookbook as well, and he disguised it as a Minecraft um, guide. Now, I play Minecraft, and I love it. I'm currently making a very complicated railway system, which I'm really enjoying, but I do need to use guides to find out how to use certain aspects of the game, and I would just be fearful that my lovely little railway would turn into bridge over the River Kwai, and suddenly I've blown the whole thing up by accident. I mean, was, is this a prank gone wrong, or...? I don't think this is a prank, because he did it through Telegram, and what I'm sensing is there's a little bit of the edgelord about him. Mm. Um, in, you know what an edgelord is. I think I can infer what yes. an edgelord is. Yes, it's one of these people who kind of purposefully put out very controversial kind okay. of material just to kind of, you know, um, oh, get the reaction. There's, um, there's one on your left. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Leo Edgelord Curse. Um, and uh, he used Telegram and he was sharing these things. Now, he has been locked up for serious terrorism offences, but what the article is suggesting is this is purely down to him owning two books. Now, obviously... Well, it was the anarchist cookbook and Mein Kampf, ah, like Hitler's oh. Mein Kampf. <laughs> but people who have read Mein Kampf, I have not, have reviewed it as it's a bit nonsensical, a bit all over the place, a bit... Ooh, a bit you read it today and you think, well, these are the rambling, ramblings of a madman. Um, so how far you could say that it would incur people to do anything, I don't know. But what's... It's serious terrorism offences, but what he's actually done is buy books and share them. He's kind of made this information free, but it is dangerous information. Yeah. Mm. So it is a bit of... What's your view, Neo? Mm. Well, I think, it's I mean... just a naive kid who doesn't know what he's doing. It, well, it could have all been avoided. I mean, he was days away from losing his, his virginity. And then, you know, he would have lost all interest in crazy bomb-making and stuff. But, yeah, I think the fact that he shared, uh, you know, these, these guides... Uh, if he just owned them, I think he'd have a defence. But the fact that he shared them on Telegram, disguised them as, as Minecraft, just because it sounds yeah. a bit similar, uh, with 12,000 users, I mean, there's going to be some people in there that could present a, a real terrorist threat. He himself could have presented a real terrorist threat, so he can't really mess around with this stuff. No, but 42 months, three and a half years. Yeah. Well, strikes me as he probably time. won't do it again. No, and he won't, but he wouldn't probably do it again if even if he was given a caution. And now he gets to lose his virginity he's in gonna, jail. <laughs> he's going to be radicalised. I remember when I was at university, this is before the internet, um, they used to look at what the MI5 apparently used to look at who took what books out of the library. That was their equivalent of monitoring your content. And, and if you took certain books out, they'd go, this guy could turn out to be a spy. He's a good person to hire as a spy. And one of the books was Mein Kampf. Mm. Wow. This might have been hearsay at university. Mm. Anyway, apparently, if you're interested enough to, to read Mein Kampf when you're at university, you're of a certain mindset that might make you a, turn you into a spy mm. in later life. Who knew? Right, the uh, star is next, and a North Korean dance tutor, already I like this story, has been arrested for teaching capitalist Dance routines. What is a capitalist dance routine, Leo? Uh, I think you do the, the signing the property deeds for <laughs> private ownership. I'm not, I'm not the sure. Pay the cash. Yeah, you the yeah. pay the cash. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what they... I think they just mean, um, you know, uh, too unlimited, if, if I'm not showing my age there, or whatever the new ones are, One Direction. Okay. I knew there was a number at the start. But, um, yeah, so a dance teacher has been arrested under new laws uh, under the Elimination of Reactionary Thought and Culture Act, which was... Read that again slowly, because it's amazing. The Elimination of Reactionary Thought and Culture Act, uh, which was written into law by Nadine Dorries to deal with Jimmy Carr. <laughs> um, and under the most serious <laughs> cases, the law carries the death penalty for perpetrators. Yeah. Um, and it's been used to apply to incidents where drivers have tinted the windows of their cars, which is seen as Western decadence. Uh, and those that use South Korean style speech or slang. So there's, they're really not, they, they don't mess around in North Korea. They're quite, well, they take, when they say they're authoritarian, they're authoritarian, you know? What's your view on this? Have you ever been? I have never been to North Korea, but I am fascinated by the place. Um, now, this was a teacher who was actually doing the correct thing for her students, uh, and she was dancing with them, but not whilst drunk. Um, uh, in North Korea, a lot of the way that they get um, uh, media is from drops, and people will literally drop over USB sticks from South Korea, and the USB sticks will contain, like, films, programs, and music. And I just think it's really sad, because she, she wanted to inspire her school children, and they didn't want to learn the North Korea dances, which everybody knows. Like, all of their parents will know that. Nobody wants to dance like your mum or be taught how to dance <laughs> I bet, I bet like your only the brand. hokey but instead, suddenly they get Gangnam Style, which is yeah. literally a Korean pop song, and they, they can learn how to like, yeah, do yeah. that. But I think it was Gangnam Style. It could have been. Yeah. And that, because that's a Korean pop song, which they could have sang along to. And K pop is massive um, worldwide, yeah. let alone in South Korea. And that going over as well would have been. I've been up to as know. far as the border with North Korea. Wow. And they, they manipulate, they're so, they will take pictures of people on the south of the border. Uh, you know, the average height is like six, in six, inches, six inches difference or something between a North Korean and a South Korean. But they'll take pictures of um, South Koreans with trendy jeans on, with ripped jeans. 
And then they'll go, look, they, these people, they can't even... They've got holes in their jeans. They're so poor. Their lives are so miserable. So, anyway, the mirror is next. <laughs> Diane, a woman has been catfished. What is catfished? Now, a catfish is where you create this fake online profile uh, with the intent to deceive others. So you can catfish someone simply by taking a slightly more flattering photo than you would, or perhaps suggesting that because you photographed yourself by a private jet, you're going to fly in it, whereas actually then you quickly walk out of the airport and get on the bus. Uh, so this woman, but I love this story. So uh, this woman who um, on her TikTok account, she's called Just Jocelyn, and she was going to date this guy called Miles and they were sending each other messages, but then she noticed a slight issue. When you send a message from iPhone to iPhone, the message color is blue, but the message came back as green. And she went, wait a minute. He has an iPhone watch in his photograph. This is not right. And she did a reverse no Google way. image search. No I didn't way. think you could do that. Yeah. And she discovered that the image did not belong to Miles or whoever he claimed he was. It belonged to a New York model called Ron. And so she sort of identified this and she's made a TikTok video and she's put it out there to say to people, you know, it doesn't hurt to do a little bit of snooping to make sure that the people that you're meeting online are genuinely who they say they are. And last night I saw the Tinder swindler. Tinder? Tinder. Tinder. The Tinder swindler. And that is all about catfishing. Is that a title of a film? It is, yes. Kind of a cool title. Oh, it's a documentary film and it's all about these women who were literally robbed of millions of pounds by this uh, man who had a fake, who was a catfish. And so this woman is trying to warn people. Jocelyn from Ontario, Canada is trying to save other people. Good old Jocelyn, go on, Leah. Oh, did, did she actually meet the guy? Did she ever like, because it seems that with all these swind swindlers, no. they never meet up. And the whole point of Tinder is you, you meet up, you, you know, you send a few messages, but then you meet up for a coffee or something. So maybe instead of having like, you know, a 10 year relationship over text, meet up with the person. There was a, the there was a comedian, as we know, who was dating people on Tinder nasty guy and women were waking up the next day and he, you know he didn't nick their money or nick their stuff, and stuff oh yeah like i'm just glad you didn't say kidney <laughs> <laughs> the times is next and boris johnson has apparently been singing glory again as i will survive leo yeah so this is a bit of a concocted story so uh, in his first interview <laughs> since taking over as downing street director of communications guto harry is that how you pronounce guto, it guto i think guto guto harry told the told the welsh language website who can probably pronounce his name that the prime minister acknowledged the appalling hurt of downing street party allegations etc uh, but he then uh, he then said um uh, he said G guto harry of course was dismissed from gb news for taking the knee and this, he's, he's gone on to, I mean, sadly, his life seems to be in free fall because he's now uh, Downing Street Director of Communications. But he asked, uh, <laughs> he asked um, At least Boris... I know what job we're all going to have when, we're, <laughs> when headliners sack us. <laughs> <laughs> Stacking shelves, yep. In Downing in, Street. In, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, the... Um, he asked Boris if he was going to survive, and Boris started singing, yes, you know, I will survive, so the Gloria Gaynor song. So, they... it's, yeah, it's a quip, and they made, okay. a, made a story of it. OK, and... we haven't got long, so I'm going to move on to the next All one. Right. The Guardian is next, and potato milk will soon be on UK shelves, uh, which... Uh, what's potato milk, Diane? Well, the Swedish have discovered a way to milk a potato. <laughs> now, I'm not sure who was touching the potato and how they found the udder, but they have done it and they have made this potato milk, which is going to rival all the other alternative milks. And it used to be just available online, but now the Swedish have gone, no, you must have it in your supermarkets. So I believe Waitrose is going to be the first one to bring this potato milk. It's not vodka. I have, there's no alcohol hole in it, which I yeah. think is deeply sad. Um, because, I mean... I'm going to take a that? traditionalist view and say that potatoes were not meant to be milked, cows were meant to be milked, and we should drink cows and eat potatoes. Leo, you're going to correct my well, this antiquated is, ways. This you? is the argument the vegans always say. They always say, oh, you shouldn't drink milk because it's designed to make a, a baby cow grow. And it's like, well, like, lettuce wasn't designed for us. Lettuce was designed to, like, harvest like power from the sun or, uh, you know, almonds were designed to, to give energy to the seed as it grows. Nothing was designed for us. We just eat it anyway because it's nice. Because we're great. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be, <laughs> it'll go, it'll be a huge hit and then they'll discover it's as bad for you as seed oils are. Anyway, that, that's a, a subject for another show. Our time here is done. 
Thank you to my panel, Leo Kirst and Diane Spencer. Headliners will be back at the same time tomorrow night with Simon Evans hosting. In the meantime, if you're looking for a Tony Blair impersonator for your corporate event, <laughs> I am your man. They don't even think I look like Tony Blair. Nothing like but I do. <laughs> um, until tomorrow, folks, it's Cheerio. Thank you for watching. GB News is the UK's home of discussion and debate from all perspectives. To stay up to date on the latest stories, make sure that you subscribe to the GB News channel right here on YouTube. You can watch us live 24-7 across the whole world. You can also check out exclusive content and catch up on previous episodes of your favourite shows. Every day, we ask the questions that you ask. So why not add your voice to the conversation in the comments section? Don't forget to subscribe. We are GB News, Britain's news channel. Every night at 11 on GB News, we bring you the next day's stories the day before. It's basically like time travel. If it's a big story, we'll cover it, guaranteed. But we'll also have some fun along the way. Big opinions, big laughs. Sometimes, big hair. This is Headliners, Headliners the paper review show that won't send you to sleep like